Welcome to Mr. Bebop. I went through a major reading slump recently, but now that I've recovered, I got to thinking about my favorite books growing up. I don't think there's ever been a time that I wasn't reading anything, and it's because of these books. I realized just how important children's books and young adult literature are in bridging the gap between fairy tales and more serious books. So here I am, a lifelong reader because of The Marches, Katie Carr, The Shell Asians, and Nancy. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott This was the first real book my mom bought me. Real because the books I remember reading up to this point were picture books and Bible stories. When I got my copy of Little Women, I was awestruck by its beautiful hardcover and thick manuscript-like pages. I remember that cover so vividly, with Meg dressed in a gorgeous purple ball gown as she attends Sally's party. Sadly, I lost my book to a termite attack, but I've since bought another copy, because no one ever really outgrows the March sisters and Marmy. Well done, Secret 7! By Enid Blyton. When my cousins, who used to live next door to us, had to leave for the States, they had a huge garage sale. I remember scoring some Superman comics. My cousin's viewfinder that I'd been eyeing for years. And one Secret 7 book. I'm not 100% sure that this is the right title. All I remember is that it had a yellow cover, again with the memories of covers, and there was a treehouse involved. It wasn't just a book either, it was more like a hardcover comic, with a recipe for Secret 7 cookies. Exercises for identifying different types of trees. I remember poplars for some reason. And instructions for a DIY miniature garden. Never mind the implausibility of children having that much independence and getting involved with thieves and criminals. I enjoyed the Secret Society's adventures and reading about Elevenses and Orangey. It was just a fun read. Little House on the Prairie by Laura Ingalls Wilder It was a glorious summer when my cousin lent me all her Little House books. I lined them all up on my mom's shelf and it was like a ceremony for me every time I would pick up the next book in the series. I was swept along with the Ingalls on their homesteading adventures. I remember reading words like molasses and calico for the first time. I didn't know what they were, but they sounded amazing. They made their own bread, put sawdust on the floor to keep the ice cool, and they bathed only once a week. Ew. But I enjoyed every page of it. I was so sure my cousin would give me all the books because I love them so much. Alas, the summer ended and she came back for her books, and I'm still not over that. Daddy Long Legs by Jean Webster I still read this to this day. 
One of the reasons I love it so much is its epistolary style. The story unfolds from the perspective of the heroine, Jerusha Abbott, because her benefactor, Daddy Longlegs, never writes back. But it's not one-sided for all that. I also love that it's set in college, so there are many anecdotes about school, lessons, and dorm life. I think the love story is sweet too, though I admit there have been times over the years when I have questioned if there wasn't anything creepy about the way Jerusha and Daddy Longlegs relationship evolved. But it's loads better than the movie. The sequel, Dear Enemy, is another epistolary novel. Jerusha's college friend Sally McBride is the protagonist, but though that's a good read too, it has more serious tone, so I much prefer Daddy Longlegs. What Katie Did Next by Susan Coolidge This is the sequel to What Katie Did, and there is no simpler reason for my listing this instead of the original than because this is the only book I have. Ha! <laughs> I've since read about Katie's exploits in the other books in the series. But this remains my favorite partly because of nostalgic reasons, and partly because this is the book where Katie goes on a trip to Europe. My well-worn paperback copy, yes I still have it, also has charming pencil illustrations that portray Katie as a Gibson girl with masses of hair and frilly gowns. My 12-year-old and 30-something selves are enamored. Nancy Drew by Carolyn Keene This is the first book series I collected seriously. I never did buy all the books because not all of them were available and also because they got too expensive. But it was a treat whenever I could buy a new book and add it to my bookshelf. As with most of the books I read, it started because of an old hand-me-down copy lying around the house. It was The Mystery of the Tolling Bell. And all the words in the title were downright scary, so I asked my mom and sister if they thought it would be too much for me. They said no, and so I started my Nancy Drew obsession. My godmother encouraged my reading too, and when she found out this was my favorite, she bought me books for every special occasion. Paperback Nancy Drews were issued when I got older, and I tried them out for a while. Nancy was more modern and the covers were more teen-oriented, but they never had the same magic as the original series. Though when I reread some of them recently, I found myself being more annoyed by Nancy's perfection than anything. She can basically do anything that a case calls for, whether it's acting, waitressing, or cracking uncrackable codes. The books didn't age well, but they sure were a memorable part of my childhood. The Story Girl by L. A. Montgomery Nothing much happens in this book apart from Story Girl telling stories. That's it. It's summer in Prince Edward Island and a group of cousins entertain themselves by spending all day in the orchard or fields. That's all and yet, reading the book, I can practically smell the hay and feel the fresh breeze. I love how Montgomery's books are almost always set in PEI because it evokes such an idyllic atmosphere. I've never been there, but because of this book, I always imagine it as postcard perfect. With white picket fences and milk delivered in bottles. I'm probably wildly wrong, and I hope I don't offend anyone from PEI who ever sees this. But to me, it's perfect 
because it brings back vivid memories of the first time I read this. In our school library during the last few lazy days of the school year, with the sunlight slanting through the windows. The Chalet School Series by Eleanor M. Brent Dyer I love this gloriously dated and old-fashioned series so much, I wrote a separate post about it. Suffice it to say that I gave away all my Nancy Drews but I never parted with my 10 precious chalet books. Sweet Valley High by Francine Pascal Who can forget the Wakefield twins, Perfect Elizabeth and Bad Girl Jessica? They were the perfect California girls, tanned, blonde, and gorgeous. I felt so grown up when I quote-unquote graduated to Sweet Valley Books. I never collected them because I had classmates who had most of the books so we just borrowed from these more fortunate ones. I had no problem with the borrowing rotation because I was always a fast reader and so ended up always first on the list. When the saga, The Wakefields of Sweet Valley came out, we all went crazy because it was three times as thick as the regular books. I didn't realize it at that time, but we had a book club going on. Looking back, I was really lucky that my classmates were nerds like me, who, instead of giving me a hard time about being a bookworm, actually encouraged me to keep on reading. I'm just glad that I never finished the series, because I think my innocence would have been shattered with what Liz and Jess end up doing. Chain Letter by Christopher Pike This is another one of those books that we all went crazy for in school. Here's the story. A group of friends are involved in a crime, but keep it a secret. Except, someone knows and starts sending them chain letters. Ah, oh, I can't even look up the rest because it still scares the bejesus out of me. I think the reason it's on this list is, apart from scaring me to death, it's associated with great memories of my friends in school and all the G-rated fun we had, which at the time made us feel so cool. Cake fights on the roof of a friend's house. Sneaking off to McDonald's instead of going to school. And telling ghost stories at Girl Scout sleepovers. Good times. What are the books on your list? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. See you again next time.